wise man once said, why should we not all live in peace and harmony? We look up at the same stars, we are fellow passengers on the same planet, and we dwell beneath the same sky. What matters it along which road each individual endeavors to find the ultimate truth? There's a lady sitting behind me that I would like you to meet. You don't know her because you haven't met her before. She comes from another part of this world that you and I lived in and on. However, she uh, does look up at the same sky, up at the same stars. Who is this woman? What is her name? What does she do? Why is she here? Well, those are all questions that I think she can answer better than I can. I am Helen Lichtenberger. I have a husband and three boys. We are German refugees from Yugoslavia. Our home used to be in the part of Yugoslavia which used to belong to the Austro-Hungarian after it was given to Yugoslavia and end of the First World War. First of all, I should like to ask you to excuse my English. At home we were used three languages, but when I came to America I have not speak English at all. But I find it out very soon that I had to learn it. You would like to know how it happened that we came to America and to Iowa. As the front came near to our city in 1944 and the air attack increased, we, like many thousands, planes to flee from the approaching communists. So I find myself with my two children and two suit suitcases one September evening on the train. Traveling was not so easy those days because the trains were often attacked by night by partisans and by day by bombers and fighter planes. When the train started at nine o'clock in the night, we have not known we will live to the next morning or not, because the train a night before was attacked and 22 women and children were killed. But nothing happened on this rainy and stormy night, and we lived through the next day's air attack too, and arrived only 12 hours later in Vienna. There we had to change train and went south to the place where we spent the next six years. I felt easier after my husband had joined us four weeks later. But it did not stay so peaceful there, and this area was bombed and bombed again. As the communists drew near, the flood of refugees from Eastern Europe increased daily. There were at last 500,000 uh, refugees in Austria a country just half so big than Iowa, and half of it covered by high mountains with a population of over six million. Our hardest part was the time after the war. Food was very scarce, and at time we had to ration our bread for one slice in a day. All food, food was rationed, but even so hard to get. There was, so, there was no bus services, and we had to walk three, four miles to get our food or groceries and to carry our load home. We waited sometimes for hours and hours in line to be told that everything is sold for today to try it the next day again. The rations were very small, and to keep our children alive, we tried to get some food from the farmers, but they did not like to sell anything for money. So we have to give away this little clothing, gold, cigarettes, coffee, tea, or ev everything what we had. It was very hard for a mother to say, I cannot more or I have not more to a hungry child when it asked for more. But we were very we lost everything and our home, but we were very happy to be in Austria because refugees who come daily from Yugoslavia and Hungary told terrible things how people were uh, starved and tortured to death. Several of our friends or relatives 
found their death in such horrible ways. They send younger people to Russia or kill them. Children or other, other older people came to the starvation camps, where several of hundred thousand died. In many cases, children were taken away from their parents, and no record was kept to whom these children belong. Now the Tito, trying to get a better term with the West, he sent such a children back to Germany or to, uh, to Austria, and the parents or relatives tried to find out their own. They tried to identify them as good they can. In most cases, the children don't know their name or to whom they belong. We thanked our Lord that we could flee in time, that we and our children have not had to go through all this suffering. We could see very soon that Austria was too small to ab absorb all these refugees. And, as we, and we look for opportunity for emigrate. And as Methodists, we had always some connection with the Methodist Church in America, and so it was the Methodist Church who sent the ad that we can come over after we have waited uh, almost six years. We had originally planned to stay in New York, but we did not like the big city and the mixed population too well. And when we received the invitation to Iowa, we came gladly. We found here friends from the first day. They helped to adjust ourselves to the new life. It is hard to start a new life in our age with a family and with nothing. But the kindness and the friendliness of the people we know make it easier for us. The life at home used to be different than here. Only few people could afford to own houses or cars. Building was much more expensive than here because wooden houses was not permitted in towns and brick and stone was much higher. Our cities were cleaner, the streets were washed and wet, but we had not so much car parked on. Cleanliness, different from home to home, the same like here. The food is mostly the same, but it's prepared in a different way. The women spend much more time to preparing meals why we use just fresh vegetables, fresh meat, and all the cooking, uh, baking, canning, and most baking bread, and everything were made at home. The most people, they just uh, prepare everything for the winter back home, and uh, this makes much more uh, work for a woman. But not only the life, our women different, the life of our men different too. You could hardly find a man to help in the kitchen or to do dishes. When it was too much for the wife, he rather hired her a maid or some other help. The mother is the center of the family life like here. Children seem to be children longer than here and parents have more influence of them. High school children are not except to earn any money while going to school. I do not want to criticize or praise either one. And first, we compared everything. But we understood the reason later why certain things were different here from there. I have, I have been asked to, ask, to tell some little stories what happened the same here than back home. My mother used to tell us, uh, oh, when she raised us girls, she just always said, you must uh, learn everything to do, and when you are uh, in your own household, you can uh, better tell a maid, or yet better do your own work. And she told us always the story how a young girl married, a uh, farmer girl married an uh, engineer in the town, and when he brought her the first visitors, 
she have to make some coffee and she went in the kitchen and uh, put the coffee beans in the pot and was sitting waiting that they get soft and uh, we always thought that mother, mother just kid us but I have an experience mm -hmm. here in Des Moines once I was in a store and uh, a girl was buying coffee and the grocer asked her shall I uh, grind the coffee for you oh she said I don't know you have to grind the coffee before you you use it and she said I never have cooked coffee I don't know you you must grind it before when you think you can grind it now I say it is just the same here then over there we are glad to be in America even if not all our hopes was fulfilled it take it take perhaps longer for people of our age to feel at home again but the campus and the friendliness the people here helped us much our boys do not have our problems they go to school and you cannot tell them from other children I think they're more American than the Americans and we were already able to help some of our relatives to come over to. I have been asked often and off why we have not brought over our furniture or, the, or other household stuff. I can just tell this, that the people of this country do not know what it means to live through a war as a civilian, and I wish they never would experience it. May God save us all from a new war. Well, it appears that whether you live in Yugoslavia or in the central part of the United States, some newlyweds have to be taught to grind their coffee beans before they make coffee. We asked you to meet today Mrs. Andrew Lichtenberger, formerly living in Yugoslavia and now in the United States, because we thought you would enjoy knowing her. A lady from another country. Once it was a long ways off, but now it isn't very far away in this air age. We thought you could meet her and, and would like her when you knew her. Language gets in the way, yes, it often does. But uh, that's a difference we can live with. The things that we like in common and dislike, our needs and our wants, in other words, our common humanity, seems to be even more important than those differences. We asked you to meet Mrs. Andrew Lichtenberger today and through her to meet her people of Yugoslavia who with us dwell on the same planet beneath the same sky and look up at the same stars. 